Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lower United Methodist Church. This morning, I have an important announcement to make to all of you. Uh, the, the cabinet and the bishop has appointed me, projected an appointment for me, beginning in July at Ben's United Methodist Church. That means that Lower is going to receive a new pastor beginning in July. This might take some of you by surprise. And it's not because I don't love this church or because you have not been faithful. I know we have wonderful times together, but I have prayed seriously to the Lord. You know, since I came to this church, I knew that the Lord will guide me to help you grow. And on these days, I always prayed, Lord, don't take me away until they're ready. And I have seen you grow. I have seen the things you do. I have seen that you plan beautiful things, reaching out to the community, blessing everybody around. I am so amazed by the things that the Lord has done through you as a church, and I know you're ready to receive someone else. And let me go to help another congregation who needs the presence of the Lord at this difficult time. We don't know which pastor is going to come to lower yet. But as soon as the announcement is done, you will know. Actually, I was supposed to let you know last week, so probably some of you have already known, and I apologize. I was just not ready to make the announcement. But I will be here with you until June. You will have time to talk, to share, to tell me whatever you want to say, and together, let us make this transition for the Lord, for this church, and this community, together as a family, like we have always done it. Thank you, Lord Church. I love you. I love you very much. And now as we listen to the music, let us process this news let us center and let us allow the presence of the living God center us in his love.
the chief priest had decided they wanted to arrest Jesus away from the crowds of followers. Judas, Judas offered to help and deliver him during the night. While Jesus prayed at the Mount of Olives, Judas betrayed him to the Jewish rulers. To identify Jesus in the dark, Judas used the traditional greeting of respect, honor, and brotherly love. A kiss. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? We heard the echo of Hosanna, spoken in love. Were you in the garden when the disciples fell asleep? We saw the betrayal in Judas' kiss. Were you in the courtyard when the cock crowed? We felt the denial in Peter's mouth. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? We heard the silence of the world in darkness. Let us pray. Merciful one, help us remain faithful in the midst of our betrayals. Help us to stay awake during our times of trial. Forgive us when we wash our hands in the face of evil. Out of Christ's anguish, help us see light. Out of Christ's suffering, help us touch the mystery of mercy and grace that pours from your heart of love. Amen. I invite you now to lift up your joys, concerns, the blessings you have received, the concerns in your hearts. Lift up the names of the people that you love that need the presence of God today. Join me in praying. Oh God, our Lord, here we are with gratitude for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. As the sun comes and shines, we can feel your warmth and breath, and we know that you are here with us, bringing us together in your love. Oh Lord, we know of your power and love, and we lift up those who need you today. There are people around us that need comfort and consolation as they mourn for the loved ones that has passed. There are some people who struggle with their relationships, with families. They need your peace, Lord. There are people who struggle financially. There are people who struggle in their jobs. There are people who keep trying to find a job and cannot find it. These are difficult times, Lord. And we ask you, we plead to you to send your Holy Spirit with your joy, with your healing touch, with your strength, with your courage, with your blessing of love, and help us fulfill the needs of your people. Help us 
bless each other, bring us together, heart with heart, soul with soul, as we serve this community. Help us bless your people and shine for your glory, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 5. Who can believe what we have heard? And for whose sake has the Lord's arm been revealed? He grew up like a young plant before us, like a root from dry ground. He possessed no splendid form for us to see, no desirable appearance. He was despised and avoided by others, a man who suffered, who knew sickness well. Like someone from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we didn't think about him. It was certainly our sickness that he carried, and our sufferings that he bore. But we thought him afflicted, struck down by God and tormented. He was pierced because of our rebellions, and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. By his wounds are we healed. self 
Join me in the prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, you know our hearts, and still you love us. We have denied you, and we have denied our calling to serve one another. We have betrayed you, and we have betrayed your commandment to love one another. Teach us to love and serve you faithfully, and to love and serve one another by the example you have set for us. Amen. Rejoice, our Lord offers forgiveness and restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The text comes from the book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 43 through 50. Suddenly, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a mob carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests, legal experts, and elders. His betrayer, had given them a sign, arrest the man I kiss, and take him away under guard. As soon as he got there, Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, then he kissed him. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew a sword and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his ear. Jesus responded, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like an outlaw? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple, but you didn't arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all his disciples left him and ran away. Have you ever been betrayed by a kiss? By someone that had planned something against you and at the same time pretend to love you? It is not strange to hear a story like this because still in these days we see betrayers doing things. A betrayer works in the dark. A betrayer, betrayer pretends that their feelings are genuine, pretends to relate in love. What amazes me is that for three years, Judas was able to see Jesus in action, to experience his love, to hear his words, to receive his blessings, to walk with the master, to experience healing, to experience the multiplying of fishes to experience the sea, the storm, stop and comes to see him in action with authority, with his love, full of the spirit, transforming the hearts of the community and still he was not able to choose love and to align his will with God's will. So that night after praying, well, the disciples got asleep, but Jesus prayed. He was able to stand. Enough, he said, the betrayer is coming. And Judas came, not alone, but full of friends with their cups and swords. Some people think he didn't really realize what he was doing. But you know, this was his plan. 
He's the one who reached out the chief priest and said, I will deliver him to you. He knew that Jesus will be arrested. He's the one who guides them, probably went to the upper room first and then figure out they were in Gethsemane, praying as he always did. He's the one who said, bring others because he's surrounded by the disciples. This can turn ugly. This was his plan from the beginning till the end. But what amazes me in the whole story is how Jesus stands firm till the end, genuinely, genuinely full of authority, he stands in the midst of everything. Enough, be there he comes, and with a kiss, he betrays Jesus. And as he kisses him, Jesus knows, do what you need to do, he said. The arrest has begun. Can you imagine the fear in the hearts of the disciples that were not ready? This took them by surprise. The violence and anger to the world, just like us, take us by surprise. Whenever we hear of a time in which moths comes with swords or with whatever in angry and violence to come and, and, and do things for innocent bystanders or to innocent people, our hearts are always taken by surprise. It doesn't matter how many times we hear a story like that, it always crushes our hearts because we know in the heart of God there is a desire for peace, there is a desire for unity, there is a desire for healing, there is a desire for bringing this world together. So when we see this anger, violence, screaming, our hearts do not know what to do. And in the silence of our heart, sometimes we run like the disciples did. Sometimes we hide. Sometimes we get troubled and sad. But look, look at the master. Look at Jesus. Look at how he stands. Look at how he does not move. He does not fear. He does not run. He does not let his guard down. And when one of his disciples cut the ear of one of the servants, in the moment, he heals with the same love, with the same strength, with the same power, with the same desire to bring love and peace to the world. In the midst of his own arrest, he stands in peace for the world to see how do we encounter injustice, how do we encounter anger, how do we encounter violence, only holding of the hand of the master who has the power to bless in the midst of the hardest situations. He speaks peace, he brings healing, he shares love with the authority from heaven. Nothing moves him, nothing waves him, nothing changes his heart of love for humanity. This story might make us sad because whenever we hear of a betrayer, we feel uncomfortable when we hear of people doing terrible things for others. Our hearts doesn't know how to respond. But the story reminds us to hold on to that Jesus, to hold on to his love, to hold on to that peace, to trust the power of this Holy Spirit, to know that in him there is justice and righteousness, peace and love. We remember the heart of God and we can hand on 
trusting that the future will bring us joy because the master stands firm in the midst of the most difficult situations. We can trust that God is still with us. God bless you. Join me now in the final benediction. Go into the world with the light of Christ in your heart. Go with courage willing to stand by the truth. Go forth with hope in your heart and love to share with the world. Amen.